Australian Defence Force supports elections. Polling begins in central and rural Morbe. And Catholic Bishops Conference says vote wisely. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and a thank you for joining me for Saturday's news. Polling has finally started today in some parts of the country with the support of the Australian government working behind the scenes to deliver the elections. The Australian Defence Force has helped the PNG Electoral Commission deliver ballot papers and deploy troops into districts around the country. Bethan Herman with this report. In a joint operation called HANA, the ADF, upon request from the Papua New Guinea government, helped the Electoral Commission with the election process. So we're, we're meeting all, all the requirements that have been set for us by the Papua New Guinea Election Commission and uh, we've been able to move about £45,000 worth of electoral materials and we've uh, been able to uh, move uh, approximately 120 uh, security forces from the Papua New Guinea Defence Force and the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary uh, to uh, the location they're required to provide security in PNG. <laughs> Joint Task Group 658 includes specialist assistance like helicopters and other logistic assets that Papua New Guinea doesn't have. Because we don't have uh, the required, maybe let's say, equipment to transport our sensitive materials and uh, with the support with the ADF is uh, very much help to us. Operation HANA aims to help PNG authorities conduct a safe, free and fair election. But Papua New Guinea's terrain is tough with mountains and islands scattered. Logistical support was always going to be expensive and challenging for a country that has a budget deficit and outstanding loans. Those involved in the operation experienced Papua New Guinea firsthand. But uh, it's a great country to fly around and the terrain here is something that you don't see anywhere else in the world and it is just a beautiful country. Papua New Guinea is holding its breath as voters are going to the polls to vote for new leadership or keep the O'Neill government. A lot has been said during the campaigning period, but in the following weeks, the outcome of the campaign rhetoric will show in the polling results. Petri Hariman, National MTV News. Jiwaka is prepared to go to the polls despite challenges. Jiwaka election managers Rosi Pandihau says polling materials and officials are already geared up to carry out polling. Pandihau told MTV News a petition regarding polling venues by candidates has been the only issue in Jiwaka. Jiwaka province has had many challenges in its election preparation, from petitioning of polling venues to the appointment of returning officers. In an interview with MTV News, Jiwaka election manager Rossi Pandiao says despite these challenges, Jiwaka is prepared for the polls. Everything is okay. Materials are already on the ground. And I'm uh, working my inventory and all, so whatever that we need, we will advise uh, HQ ASAP and they will send us the materials that uh, we require. Pandiao has come under criticism by candidates contesting in the three open electorates and the regional seat. But she says the visit by the IDEC team earlier this week has seen Electoral Commissioner Patilius Gamato clarify issues regarding polling venues. For the counting venue, Commissioner has uh, announced here today that the uh, counting venue will be at uh, Bans. Uh, sorry, uh, will be at Bans and. Uh, I'm looking forward to preparation of the counting venue and have it ready before end of polling, which is on the 29th. Southern Highlands is also ready for polling. Election manager David Wakia says everything is in order with polling materials under every police guard. We are now in the process of numbering all the ballot boxes and placing all, uh, all the materials in separate containers for each electorate. Southern Highlands and Jiwaka will have one day polling on June 30th. Jagla Pava Jr. National MTV News. Chairman of the Hela Election Steering Committee, William Bando, wants security tightened in Hela as polling looms. 
Bando said Hela is unpredictable and the Joint Security Forces must be stationed in all centers. Hela will go to the polls next Monday, June 26th. Speaking in Tari recently, Bando raised concerns of the security measures put in place for Hela. He says despite the gun surrender operation, those involved are on the loose and might cause issues. He says polling is upon them and security must be a priority. We need a man, soldiers and the, and the police, the security forces to be stationed in those hot spots. <laughs> However, Bando has received overwhelming guarantees by the police commissioner and PNGDF commander that security for Hela is a priority with the joint forces working together. But, you know, this is our second election and I think uh, in the minds of many of our people here, they are, uh, they are looking forward to electing their leaders. You know, we've gone through uh, so much in a short time, in our short history as a province. This will be Hela's second national election, but will be a day polling. The provincial election manager says a day might be a worry for polling officials, given the remoteness of some polling venues. In that case, we will be having another additional day in polling because most of our areas are isolated and is remote, where it's accessible by only uh, fixed winds and, and uh, choppers. According to TIPA, Hela has nearly 200,000 registered eligible voters. Voters have less than two days left before polling, but some have criticized the awareness carried out by authorities in regard to the LPV system. Some people found nice that. Some people long long can't about some place that. That's all you mean, must kill him. How let's in by you mean running more same. Nah, you mean by making more same. Nah, you mean kill him more some place. And more by seven, I understand. Nah, by you mean go running legs in or same. Nah, more by thing him nice that. Now or no, I went to this <coughs> lagani something by come now. All I went to this lagani no God. All is that not in that so. Hella S3 open electrodes, Taripori, Komo Magarima, and Koroba Lake, Kopiago, and the regional seat. Jack Lopava Junior National MTV News. Campaigning in Enga province has ended on a peaceful note. Police in Enga say no major election-related violence was reported after the tribal clashes in Kompiam district earlier in the month. Generally, campaign was relatively quiet in all major centres of the province as they wound up the campaign period. Security has been beefed up with the police operations underway. Enga will have one-day polling on July 4th with Western Highlands province. Responsible voting was the key message highlighted by the Catholic Bishops' Conference in Port Moresby yesterday. The CBC wants to ensure voters utilize their democratic right to vote freely and to do so responsibly. The Catholic Bishops' Conference wants to see responsible voting. They are encouraging all eligible voters in Papua New Guinea to exercise their votes freely and not to sell their votes. In an interview with MTV, CBC General Secretary Father Victor Roach described this phase of election as very sensitive and emphasized that voters should know their vote is their democratic right and they should not feel pressured by another person or candidate to influence their decision. I'm sure if they are a little uh, biased or they are influenced by the leaders because if they won't talk, then they will have to vote. And sometimes they are forced and uh, they are sometimes bought. So these things happen, but I call upon all the people who are eligible to vote, don't allow your vote to be bought. And uh, this is very important. And the church, in a very special way, as a conscience keeper of the country, we call upon all the people, not only the people who are supposed to vote, and also the, the leaders, the candidates, the ministers, please do not allow the votes to be bought are sold or rigged. Father Victor further added that it is the duty of the voters to safeguard and maintain the country's democracy. Therefore, voters should vote responsibly and sensibly and not incite or involve themselves in violence. Father Victor called on the Electoral Commission and security personnel to carry out their responsibilities faithfully as neutral parties to the polls. Meanwhile, there will be a pre-deployment briefing for the more than 3,000 polling officials and 500 to 800 security personnel involved in the NCD polling program 
at the Rita Flynn Sporting Complex tomorrow from 9 o'clock in the morning to 12 noon. NCD election manager Terence Hetanu confirmed with MTV that there would also be a second briefing for returning officers and assistant returning officers by Chief Secretary Isaac Lupari at the Gateway Hotel at 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Mr. Hetanu is calling for all personnel involved in polling for NCD to attend these final briefings before deployment on Tuesday, June 27th. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Polling for the 2017 national general election started today in parts of the country. One of those places was the Rigo district in the central province. Eligible voters lined up at the polling stations to have their say in leadership choice. Guido Bada village in the Rigo central LLG was one of the first to go to the polls on day one of polling. By 3 p.m., about 200 voters exercised their democratic rights. Set up at the polling station for Team 2 started at 8 a.m. and locals began casting their votes at about 10 a.m. Councillor for Ward 8, Taborogobia, said Gidobada village has a voting population of 354, according to the recent common roll update. And the slow flow of people coming from, uh, from the village, people have cooperated very well. Present where the polls were being conducted was the Melanesian Spearhead Group election observers. Scrutineers of the Rigo Open and Central Regional seat candidates were there to keep an eye on things. There was also security presence. No major incident was reported besides few frustrated individuals not happy about names missing from the electoral roll. By 3 p.m., about 200 locals had cast their votes. The polling team and election observers will continue to other locations in the Rigo Central LLG to conduct similar one-day polling. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News, Central Province. A smooth start to polling in rural Morbe. Weather delays prevented polling teams from traveling yesterday. But today, the first teams were deployed to remote locations around the province. An orderly start to polling in Ward 1 of the Bulolo district. 728 eligible voters are listed on the electoral roll. Many walked for two kilometers to get to the polling station at Timini. Like previous elections, the process is slow. Many voters had been waiting for five hours when we got there. Polling officials calling out names in alphabetical order. Demata Mopa is a village leader. He wants to see change in the political leadership. His preferences don't include the sitting MP Sem Basil. As scrutineers kept close watch on the voting, there was still uncertainty over the names on the electoral roll. By the end of polling, many voters who turned 18 after the 2012 elections will have been turned away because their names weren't included. Earlier this week, Electoral Commissioner Patelius Gamato said yet again they'd done the best they could and that there were still faults in the electoral rolls. In fact, we calculated a 3% growth rate times five years. Okay, so a total of 15% increase so we released about 850,000 papers across the country. We cannot go beyond that. Timini is near the Hidden Valley project site. For many voters like Anna Solomon, the mine's benefits and the political representation in relation to those benefits are a determining factor for a candidate's win. I have good play education, plenty of good school, but the school fee problem, plenty come back to the place. Anna Solomon says there's been no intimidation, but she wants to see more women voting in the next 24 hours. Scott Whitey, National MTV News, Lay. 
The autonomous region of Bougainville is ready for the polls, which will begin on Monday. Acting election manager Desmond Timiaso told MTV News in Buka that polling materials have been distributed, with polling officials also ready for their designated sites. Meanwhile, no issues were reported during the nomination period, and Mr. Timiaso has also called again for another successful delivery of this election. Fabian Hakalitz files this report from Buka. The autonomous region of Bougainville and this polling come Monday, June 26, with polling materials distributed to all regions in Bougainville. At the moment, uh, we are in the process of distributing the uh, water rolls and the uh, ballot papers. So within the next couple of hours, we will organize that and mobilize with the members of the security forces to uh, deliver the uh, uh, ballot papers and the voter rolls uh, to all polling teams. Uh, for the actual conduct uh, on the 26th. The actual polling in the Atoll Islands might be delayed due to logistics funding from the PNG Electoral Commission, but Timiaso is confident polling will be conducted within the polling dates. Atolls we are ready, we are geared uh, to actually dispatch the polling teams to Atolls. Uh, the only thing that we are waiting for is the payment of the SIP uh, We've uh, negotiated with Bukalens Holdings and uh, we've uh, secured a SIP and uh, um, Vessel Ripos uh, has been book booked to assist us with the, uh, with the actual conduct of polling and it will be for the total number of days that the, the polling uh, would be held or conducted uh, in the atolls. International observers will observe the election conduct because this is national general election. It's also important for Bougainville's referendum come 2019. Australian Embassy, New Zealand Embassy plus other observers from the United Nations, they'll be here to observe the actual conduct of uh, Elections. We also had a couple of uh, Pacific Islanders who arrived. And uh, at the meantime, voters in the autonomous region of Bougainville have been urged to make this election a successful and historic. In Buka, Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. Still in Buka, with polling to begin on Monday, drivers and their vehicles in Buka went through road following a partnership operation by the Bougainville Police Service and MVIL office. All drivers' licenses were properly checked with vehicles inspected. These pictures, captured from cell phone, show vehicles outbound for home being properly inspected. Those found to be not roadworthy were ordered to park at the side for further inspection. Phase 3 of the Buka Ring Road project is a priority and will proceed once funding is made available. Secretary of the Technical Services Department of the Autonomous Bougainville Government, Bennett Zilu, when responding to MTV News in Buka, said late distribution of funds by the national government has affected completion of projects. And he hopes these funds will be released soon. Stories making headlines overseas when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas, high-rise buildings in the UK have failed fire safety tests as the government carries out tests on more than 600 towers across England. The buildings have been found to be covered in combustible cladding, which has thought, has thought to contribute to the rampant spread of fire at London's Greenfield Tower, where at least 79 people died. The consequences of the Grenfell Tower tragedy are now spreading across the country. Hundreds of samples of cladding similar to that used in North Kensington are being tested from tower blocks and other public buildings. Cladding on 11 blocks in eight areas in England have come back as combustible so far, including here on the Chalcot Estate in Camden, just a few miles from the Grenfell tragedy. These tower blocks are different to Grenfell in that they have non-combustible mineral fibre insulation behind the cladding. Nevertheless, as of now, fire wardens will patrol 24 hours a day until every panel's been removed. The council claiming they were misled about the fire resistance of the cladding. We never felt the need to take off these panels, take them to an independent testing centre to watch them burn. We thought we were dealing with reputable companies. This test, put on for council officials and fire chiefs by one company a few years ago, shows the difference between external wall insulation materials, non-combustible mineral-based on the left and combustible plastic-based on the right. It's illegal in some countries to use combustible cladding and insulation in tower blocks, but not here. 
I don't understand why the Prime Minister can't tell us whether that product is compliant with building regulations for a tower that is this high. The, the testing of the cladding, the testing of the materials used is being undertaken and a statement will be made by the police and the fire uh, service within the next 48 hours. Today, the chief executive of Kensington and Chelsea was forced to resign over the council's handling of the tragedy, an event which looks destined to become a watershed moment. In New Zealand, the forestry industry is turning to technology to speed up production and to make it safer for workers. It took seven years of planning to reduce the risks. This forest harvester operates on steep slopes up to 45 degrees. It cuts, it gathers and it moves the logs from the forest to the road all by remote control. I think it's pushing forward to, to a real safe future. Traditionally, trees would be cut down using chainsaws putting bushmen right in harm's way. There are hundreds injured every year. In 2013, 10 men were killed on the job, prompting a major overhaul. This has been some really groundbreaking stuff. Um, there's a number of products which are on display here at this exposition today uh, that have been the result of seven years of, of development. The Ministry for Primary Industries has been working closely with those in the bush to become more innovative. Today their innovation was shown off. You know, people aren't putting their lives in danger by working in some of the gullies that we can see down here. The fact that we've got robotics uh, now that can uh, operate from tree to tree without even touching the ground, the safer it's got to be. But some worry that safety has come at a cost. With this modern technology, it's taken the thinking away from the industry. You know, I think we should be more hands-on, personally. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, technology is the direction we're heading. And while the number of bushmen killed and injured has dropped, so too has production, bringing fears of job losses. But this new technology has given bushmen the opportunity to upskill and the reassurance that going to work is now that much safer. The majority of juries in the Bill Cosby sexual assault trial reportedly thought the entertainer was guilty. One member of the jury has spoken out about the days of deliberations that saw the case declared a mistrial after they were unable to reach a unanimous decision. Tonight, inside Bill Cosby's sexual assault trial. A juror tells ABC News on the condition of anonymity that when that jury started deliberations in an informal poll, the majority voted for acquittal on all three counts. That juror calls the 52 hours of deliberations grueling and emotional inside a tiny room not large enough to even pace. He says one juror even punched a concrete wall. Another juror, who won't say how he voted, tells ABC station WTAE the case took a toll on the jury and Cosby. I wondered if he was going to be able to finish because he looked really weathered. At times, the jury was evenly divided. But at one point, one juror says on the final full day of deliberations, the jury voted 10 to 2, finding Cosby guilty of an encounter without consent. And guilty 10 to 2 on the charge that Cosby gave accuser Andrea Constan drugs without her knowledge. But acquitting 11 to 1 on the charge that Cosby's accuser was unconscious during the alleged assault. In the end, a deadlock and a mistrial. As for Cosby, he's now planning a series of town halls to talk to young people. We want to educate the public and the world on uh, how to avoid these things and how to protect themselves. Prosecutors now vow to try Cosby again, but one juror says they shouldn't waste their time. It would be a waste of money because the man has already suffered the loss of his career and earnings over the past 11 years. Prince Harry has spoken again candidly about the burden of royal duty, saying there is no one in the family who actually wants to be king or queen. The 32-year-old has also said in an interview with Newsweek magazine that no child should be paraded publicly at his mother's funeral like he was. And the revelations are prompting some to say the prince should start towing the line more. It's a moment seared on the nation's psyche, the funeral of a princess killed in her prime, her 12-year-old son on unforgiving display. 20 years on, Prince Harry is critical of those who put him there, and he's voiced his considerable discomfort in an American magazine. The enduring Diana fascination is global. 
My mother had just died and I had to walk a long way behind her coffin, surrounded by thousands of people watching me while millions more did on television. I don't think any child should be asked to do that under any circumstances. I don't think it would happen today. My understanding was that they chose to do it. They were not coerced in any way. But of course, Harry was just 12 years old. The whole process of his mother's death, death will have been horrendous for him. A monarch and three heirs, an hereditary system secure. Now Harry's suggesting that while the Windsors are selflessly focused on the greater good, none of them is desperate to be sovereign. Is there any one of the royal family who wants to be king or queen? I don't think so, he tells Newsweek, but we will carry out our duties at the right time. This interview will irritate Republicans who seek an elected head of state and upset some monarchists who believe that in return for a privileged palace life, like the one Harry enjoys here, royals should step up to the mark without a fuss. I don't think it's such a good idea to be quite so open. Uh, he has done uh, a lot for mental health in bringing out his own true feelings. But I think we've got to a point now where enough is enough. So you've got a full score. Harry's desperately seeking the increasingly unattainable, a relatively ordinary life. Inspired by his mother's example, the personable prince insists he's not completely cut off. Chuka Sports is next. Stay with us for details. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. PNG Professional Boxing Association fighters were visited by the country's boxing legend Martin Benny while at training this morning. Martin, who has represented PNG for many years, says professional boxing needs to be revived and is calling on individuals and corporate houses to support and recognize current talents. Meanwhile, a pro boxing event will be held tomorrow at Sports Inn Club, where five bouts will take place, including the main bout. This will be their second fight as professional fighters from various clubs within Port Moresby. They came together for one reason, and that is to promote the sport of professional boxing in the country. A group of more than 10 pro boxers who started training six months ago, who solely rely on pro boxing as their career, are hoping to revive the code in the country and give it the recognition it needs. These fighters all started as amateurs who made their way up to becoming professional fighters in their own right under the PNG Professional Boxing Association. Today, as they gathered for their final training session, they were visited by former PNG pro boxer and legend Martin Benny, who gave them advice and shared thoughts on pro boxing in PNG. We need people like Jan Bosch here. Like I've been, been the, to the boxing arena, I know it's hard, very hard, but it needs a lot of hard work to come to the top. If I was an Australian champion and number one in the Commonwealth, yes, I believe these boys will come to this far too. And if they do it, I'll be the happiest man before I die, that probably. But I love to see them grow up and grow, grow to the, right to the top. That's why I'm here to support them and then give them the, probably when they see me, you know, they said, oh, I want to be like Martin Benny. He said, of course, yes. We want one of these uh, things to happen and I need all these boys to come to the stage where they can do it. Tomorrow fight will see five bouts, one of which is the main bout. Taking place at the sports scene club, the showdown will kick off with 10 amateur bouts before the main event. Legend Martin Benny says it all starts at home and the time is now for interested pro boxers in PNG to make it happen for themselves before help and support come their way. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Members of the PNG Olympics Committee, together with representatives from the UN and students from schools in Port Moresby, celebrated the Olympic Day yesterday. A variety of sporting federations were involved in promoting the code to young. Godwin Eki reports. 
Showcasing 13 different sports, students came from selected schools within Port Moresby to celebrate the Olympic Day yesterday. While some sports appeared to be new, such as gymnastics and fencing, it didn't stop the young sports enthusiast to try out every particular sport that was displayed by respective federations. Other sports included were karate, judo, basketball, cricket, volleyball, AFL, netball, badminton, PNG NRL and archery. Together with the different sports, the Olympics Committee also took time to teach the students the different Olympic values and education development programs in the country. We want to use sport to show that um, it's an important enabler uh, for human development. Thank you all and all those children, you have your holidays uh, starting today, I believe. Um, I hope you all have an enjoyable day and I look forward to seeing you all again uh, next year here during the Olympic week. Thank you. UN resident coordinator to PNG Roy Trivedi says it was a pleasure to be part of the event as sports plays a very significant role in our communities and that changes life for a lot of people. Today, the, this event really demonstrated how sports, regardless of which sport you do, brings people together. It brings people together, it encourages people to take, be active in their lives, active citizens, and it also encourages all of us to learn better, to contribute more to our communities, to our society and so on. Rapila says she is hoping to see a similar event next year, but with a bigger twist and more events included. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Still on Olympic Day celebrations in Los Angeles, USA, sports clinics were set up by U.S. Olympic Committee at the famous Rogers State Beach to commemorate and celebrate the Olympic Day. The event has been celebrated worldwide. The LA84 Foundation, the United States Olympic Committee and the Foundation of Global Sports Development hosted sports clinics for 500 young Angelinos at Will Rogers State Beach, hosting the American flagship Olympic Day celebrations on Friday. I am uh, honored to be here today as an Olympian, but also as a vice chair of the LA2024 Olympic Bid Committee, trying to bring the Olympic and Paralympic Games home to our great city. Young Angelinos participated in eight Olympic and Paralympic sports, including track and field, fencing, table tennis, volleyball, sitting volleyball, rugby, handball, and gymnastics. They were joined by more than 30 Team USA Olympians and Paralympians. So in a way, we're celebrating a movement that is in its third millennium of existence. I think it's pretty cool to be a part of that. Los Angeles is competing against Paris to host the 2024 Olympics. I keep telling my team we are at the finish line of a 400 meter IM, which was one of my races, and we're on the freestyle leg. So we are focused on 24, we're focused on getting to that finish line, and um, that's the task at hand. Olympic Day is held annually on June 23rd to commemorate the birth of Olympic Games in 1894. Well, I was a young kid in 1984 when I sat in the Coliseum and watched the opening ceremonies of the 84 Games, and it inspired me to get in the pool and swim and, and become an Olympian. And so we want to impact as many children here in the Southern California area as we can. That's why we have so many kids here today to learn about all the different Olympic or Paralympic sports they might not known about. And is celebrated by millions of people in over 160 countries. Every city that is a candidate for the Olympics is usually a pretty amazing place. I've been to four Olympics and everyone has been different. Everyone's been amazing. The people that live in each of these places are always so hospitable. And uh, I'm super excited regardless of who gets it. Its mission is to promote fitness, well-being, culture and education while promoting the Olympic values of excellence, friendship and respect. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. Stay tuned. Trucker Sports continues after the break. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. Toya Whistle will lead Team PNG to the Oceania Championships in Fiji next week. Whistle currently holds the Oceania women's 100 meter record with a time of 11.29 seconds, which she set at last year's championship in Suva. 
Athletics PNG named a final team of 36 athletes consisting of 24 male and 12 female, which also includes four junior girls and five junior boys. The U.S.-based athletes will join Team PNG later during the week. The New Zealand Warriors beat the Canterbury Bulldogs 21-14 last night at Mount Smart Stadium. The Warriors are within striking distance of the NRL's top eight after last night's win. An unspectacular but solid performance from the Warriors has temporarily moved them up to ninth place. It took a Sean Johnson field goal in the 69th minute to give the home side some breathing space. The Warriors opened the scoring for the night after a 17-meter solo try from Ken Maunalo. The Bulldogs had Josh Jackson and David Clemmer return from State of Origin and were handy making yards for the team. Jackson's night included being seen being just before halftime after slowing down play. Options either way here. Now Impi. Impi passes the ball to Josh Reynolds. Offloads it. Jackson's dropped it. They saw Sean Johnson kick a penalty to feather the Warriors' lead, a 2 at halftime. In the second half, the Warriors were the first to post points again after centre Blake Ashford scored off a Johnson kick. The Bulldogs hit back in the 55th minute, courtesy of costly errors from the Warriors. The Bulldogs winger Carrot Holland managed to add another for his team two minutes before full-time, but it wasn't enough to get them over the line. The Warriors went on to win 21 points to 14. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. And that ends Truka Sports. The weather details when we come back. Truka Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Mostly fine and windy in Port Moresby and Daru. Mostly fine, although partly cloudy in Kerama and Alotau. And mostly fine then evening showers in Popandita. In the Mombasa region, mostly fine then evening showers in Leh, mostly fine in Medang and mostly fine then possible afternoon showers in Wiwek and Banimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, few showers and thunderstorms in Loringau, mostly fine although partly cloudy in Kaviang, showers and thunderstorms in Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, mostly fine, light variable winds in all centres. Forecast for small crafts within coastal waters of PNG for the next 24 hours. Please be aware, winds can be a further 40% stronger than the average given here, and maximum waves may be up to twice the height. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwa Island, to Kerma, to Yule Island, to Hood Point, seas of 2 to 3 meters. Waters of Hood Point to Somare Island, with waters of eastern and western Milne Islands. Waters of Somare Island to Cape Vogel, to Finchhafen, seas of 2 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Finchhafen through Vitia Strait, Dampier Strait, including Siasi Islands to Long Island, with waters of West New Britain, seas of 2.5 to 3 meters. Waters of Medang to Bogia, Wiwek to Aitape, Banimo and northern PNG Indonesian border, seas of 1.5 to 2 meters. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 1 to 2 meters. And waters of New Island to East New Britain to Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea, seas moderate to rough with southeast winds of 20 to 25 knots with gusts. In the Solomon Sea, seas rather rough with southeast winds of 20 to 25 knots. 
In the Bismarck Sea, seas moderate to rough with southeast winds at 20 to 34 knots, isolated thundery showers, and in the Pacific Ocean, seas smooth to slight with northeast winds at 5 to 10 knots with isolated showers. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. And that's been Saturday's news. Thank you for your company. Pleasant viewing. Good night.